The 1961 Freedom Ride sought to test a 1960 decision by the Supreme Court in Boynton v. Virginia that segregation of interstate transportation facilities, including bus terminals, was unconstitutional. The original group of 13 rider, Freedom Riders, seven African Americans and six whites, left Washington, D.C. on a Greyhound bus on May 4, 1961. Their plan was to reach New Orleans, Louisiana on May 17 to commemorate the 7th anniversary of the Supreme Court's Brown v. Board of Education decision, which ruled that segregation of the nation's public schools was unconstitutional. The group traveled through Virginia and North Carolina, drawing little public notice. The first violent incident occurred on May 12th in Rock Hill, South Carolina, where John Lewis... Albert Bigelow and another African-American rider were viciously attacked as they attempted to enter a whites-only waiting area. The next day, the group reached Atlanta, Georgia, where some of the riders split off onto a trailways bus. On May 14, 1961, the Greyhound bus was the first to drive in Anniston, Alabama. There was an angry mob of about 200 white people surrounded the bus, causing the driver to continue past the bus station. The mob followed the bus and automobiles, and when the tires of the bus blew out, someone threw a bomb into the bus. The Freedom Riders escaped the bus as it burst into flames, only to be brutally beaten by members of the surrounding mob. The second bus, a trailways vehicle, traveled to Birmingham, Alabama. Those riders were also beaten by an angry white mob, many of whom brandished metal pipes. Birmingham P Public Safety Commissioner Bull Connor stated that although he knew the Freedom Riders were arriving and violence awaiting them, he posted no police protection at the station because it was Mother's Day. Photographs of the burning Greyhound bus and the bloodied riders appeared on the front pages of newspapers throughout the country and around the world the next day, drawing international attention to the Freedom Riders' cause and the state of race relations in the United States. Following the widespread violence, the riders could not find a bus driver who would agree to transport the integrated group, and they decided to abandon the rides. However, Diane Nash, an activist from this SNCC, organized a group of 10 students from Nashville, Tennessee, to continue the rides. U.S. Attorney General Robert F. Kennedy, brother of President John F. Kennedy, began the negotiating with Governor John Patterson of Alabama and the bus companies to secure a driver and state protection for the new group of Freedom Riders. The rides finally resumed on a Greyhound bus departing Birmingham under police escort on May 20th. Federal marshals were called in. The violence toward the Freedom Riders was not quelled, rather the police abandoned the bus just as it arrived in Montgomery, Alabama terminal, where a white mob attacked the riders with baseball bats and clubs as they disembarked. A Attorney General Kennedy sent 600 federal marshals to the city to stop the violence. The following night, civil rights leader Martin Luther King Jr. led a service at the First Baptist Church in Montgomery, which was attended by more than 1,000 supporters of the Freedom Riders. A riot issued outside the church, and King called Robert Kennedy to ask for protection. Kennedy summoned the federal marshal, who used tear gas to disperse the white mob. Patterson declared martial law in the city and dispatched the National Guard to restore order. On May 24, 1961, a group of Freedom Riders departed Montgomery for Jackson, Mississippi. There, several hundred supporters greeted the riders. However, those who attempted to use the whites-only facilities were arrested for trespassing and taken to maximum security penitentiary in Parchment. During their hearings, the judge turned and looked at the wall rather than to listen to the Freedom Riders' defense. Just had been the case when the sit-in participants were arrested for protesting segregated lunch counters in Tennessee. He sentenced the riders to 30 days in jail. Attorneys from the National Association of the Advancement of Colored People, a civil rights organization, appealed the convictions all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court, which reversed them. The violence and arrests continued to garner national and international attention and drew hundreds of new Freedom Riders to the cause. 
The riots continued over the next several months, and that fall, under pressure from the Kennedy administration, the Interstate Commerce Commission issued regulations prohibiting segregation in interstate transit terminals.